It's your boy, your cousin, your partner, Griff, and you're listening and watching the Red Carpet Recap with the beautiful, I mean beautiful, Robbie Ray. How about that? She gonna put you down with anything that got to do with a party. The inside, the outside, the backside, the roof, everything. Robbie Ray, Red Carpet Recap. How about that? Welcome to the Robbie Ray Podcast. We are talking today to Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, formerly of Isley Brothers and Isley Jasper Isley, Chris Jasper. But no, before I, before I finish, let me just say, Chris Jasper is a singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist and producer so he is bells and whistles and he is legendary ladies and gents chris jasper hey chris all right how you doing, <laughs> doing good. i'm good i'm good you know i had to you know just play my song uh caravan of love i mean everybody loves that song that is the universal song that's the universal language that's real. Yeah, it's one of my favorites, all-time favorites. Uh, and uh, when I wrote it, uh, I was, um, I thought it would be a, a hit record, but I didn't know how big it would be. You know, it, it's it's a worldwide hit. You know, all, people all over the world know this song. So uh, I'm very happy that message got out there. Absolutely. And, you know, um, so many people love that song. Uh, so many people can relate today to the song. So just uh, congratulations to you. And I'm, I'm loving all those awards in the background. Amazing. Yeah, this is my studio. This is where I do all my recording. And there's, you know, awards all over the walls here. Uh, you know, from the IC Brothers to, um, you know, my personal uh, career, my solo career. Also, um, people who have covered and sampled the music, uh, like Whitney's back here, um, Bone Thugs back there, uh, Will Smith is over here, Usher's over there, Shaka Khan's over there. You know, there's so many people that covered uh, the songs or sampled them. You know, and uh, different. Li oh, Biggie's back there. <laughs> so Absolutely. it's it's a uh, it's kind of a, a a museum for music here in my studio. <laughs> It's beautiful. Congratulations to all of your amazing accolades and just uh, uh, achievements. And Chris, you know, you have a phenomenal story. And, you know, uh, for, uh, for a lot of people they, that, that are new fans of yours, they don't necessarily know your early beginnings. Can you take us back as far as you can and tell us about your early beginnings? Well, um, I started to get interested in music when I was a young kid. I was about uh, maybe seven years old, even before that, I used to love music. And um, you know, I used to listen to guys like Sam Cooke and uh, Ray Charles, Marvin Gaye. And um, I, I used to try to play the songs by ear, you know, and I used to go over to my piano. My mother played piano. She had a piano in the house and I used to go over and try to you know, work out the chords and everything to the songs. And she saw me doing that and she uh, she insisted that I take piano lessons. She said, you have a good ear for music, Chris. You know, you should, should take lessons. You should learn how to read music. So, um, you know, I did that. And um, that was the beginning of my uh, songwriting uh, experience because my teacher would teach me about how the composers would put together their music, you know, the themes they would use, you know, the different intervals that they use and the whole nuts and bolts of, uh, you know, music. And um, I was like seven and then I graduated, when I graduated high school, um, I had a choice to make because I was studying architecture uh, as well. So I was either gonna take architecture at Ohio State or, uh, I was going to audition for Juilliard, Juilliard School of Music. So um, I decided to, um, I said, well, I've, I've been taking music longer. I've been studying music longer. So let me audition for Juilliard. And uh, I did, and you know, I was able to, uh, you know, get into Juilliard. So that's uh, where, you know, I started studying composition, you know, 
you know, for, formally studying composition because before I was getting it from my, my professor piano teacher. <laughs> okay. So um, that's when my formal composition education started. And uh, I finished up at uh, Long Island University. I had the privilege of uh, studying with the, uh, the great pianist and uh, composer Billy Taylor. Uh, he, he, t he taught a course out there and I studied with him for a while. I studied for some other composers. So I have a long history of um, you know, studying classical music and jazz. Uh, because uh, jazz was part of my uh, studies. Uh, but uh, in between there, when I graduated from high school, or no, when I was still in high school, uh, I would come to New Jersey and, you know, practice and jam with Ernie and Marvin. We had formed a, uh, a trio, and uh, we called ourselves a Jasmine Trio. And we played local dates in New Jersey, you know, we played everywhere. We even played a bowling alley one time. <laughs> nice. And and, uh, and the, the older brothers, they were at Motown at the time. They were, you know, doing doing the thing at Motown. And they would uh, some once in a while they would invite people over to hey hey come listen to these guys man you know they're really good you know they can play you know. So um, uh, there was a point where Ronald took us down to um, the studio in Inglewood. And he rec and uh, re recorded some of our original stuff down there. So um, after that, he said, they start saying, hey, man, well, you guys should start playing with us. You know, you could, should be part of our band, you know. And uh, we did that, you know, uh, in the early 70s. We were, even before the 3 plus 3 album, we were recording on the music, you know, uh, up to that point. So, um, you know, that's kind of a brief you know, history from beginning to the three plus three period, which was a, what we call the golden platinum years, you know, from three plus three to between the sheets. Um, we had gold, platinum, gold, platinum, gold, platinum, you know, albums wow. after, year after year. So um, that's kind of a brief run through, but uh, it could let you know, you know, my, you know, that I have studied music a long, long time. <laughs> I know, I, I most definitely, and um, you are phenomenal, um, instrumental, extraordinaire, you know? I mean, what can you say? I mean, you can play it, you know what I'm saying? So congratulations to you. And, you know, you started with um, the Isley Brothers, and you have a phenomenal story um, about writing the music. One in particular, Between the Sheets. Can you share that with us? Yeah, um, that was um, kind of a collaboration with uh, Ernie. And, uh, you know, Marvin wrote a few lyrics on there, too. But the musical part, um, you know, I, I had a, that When you hear that music, that's Chris Jasper. There's no nobody else playing on that song. You know, wow. it's, all, it's all keyboards. Wow. And um, um, the, the title... For the song just came to me in the studio i mean uh, ernie had a few uh lines of the first verse and he didn't have anything else you know and <laughs> i and um i was sitting in the control room and i i just wrote on a on a legal pad you know they have pads in there for you know for writing lyrics and i wrote between the sheets really big on the pad and i said that sounded like a it should fit on the end of that phrase. I said, Ernie, sing that, you know. And then he sang it, and I said, all right, that's it. That's, <laughs> we can work with this from there. Now, that works perfectly. <laughs> and so um, that song, you know, the, it didn't have an ending, though. The song just kept going on the, on the uh, bridge. And I said, it seems like it should go into something else at the end. And I said, guys, look, take a break. I said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put down, you know, something I, I have in my head. And that's the end, you know, when he says, enough of this singing, let's make love. Yes. And, <laughs> and the music changes. That's, yeah. That was edited on to, nice. the, to, to the song. And um, that's all, again, that's all keyboards. And, and uh, I came up with the, all the lyrics at the end, too. 
Absolutely, yeah. I was wondering, like, between the sheets, hmm, I wonder, is that by design that it kept going on and on and on? And then you say, okay, well, let's just do something different. Let's just take it to another level. Enough singing, let's make love. But you was making love the whole time, right? That's right. I mean, you know, (laughs) it, it was sounding good, but it seemed like, it, you know, if we could just go a little bit further, you know, musically, if you could just take them on another journey right there, you know, and um, that's kind of my thing. I, I, I believe music, you know, should take the listener someplace. <laughs> you know what I mean? It should, it should set the stage for something. And um, that's, that's what I was hearing in that song. It sounded like, OK, this part is great. You know, and, and that part was the part I came up with to the. Ooh, baby, feel your love surrounding me. Oh, wow. Uh, that was my part, too. But I said, you know, it's still, it's good, but you can still take it a little bit further. And, uh, you know, that's, that's part of my composition uh, thing, you know. <laughs> I, like, right. I, like to, I like to take music to places where you may not expect it to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. So aside from being such a uh, extraordinary writer, um, and instrumentalist, I mean, singer, you know, did you yeah, find... Did... That's another thing my mother made me do. <laughs> you know, I used to sing, I used to be so shy as a kid, right? I used to wait till I was by myself. And then, then I would sing, you know, I would, maybe a Sam Cooke tune or Marvin Gaye, or try to sing, you know, because those, those, those two guys were, you know, like, I mean, that's, that was my big influences. And uh, my mother caught me singing. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, okay, Chris, you got to join the choir too. <laughs> oh, you gotta, wow! <laughs> you got to because she was she was in the choir in high school. You know, when she was in high school, and she said, all right, you got to join the choir. You know, I think I was only in fourth grade at the time. Wow! And, uh, she said, you have to go join the choir in school. So you know, that's another thing I had to go to join the choir. You know, right? And uh, but it, you know, it, it taught me some things singing in the choir. You know, singing with other people singing with an ensemble, you know. I think that's important because some people, can, they don't know how to sing with other people. Absolutely. <laughs> you, know, you know, they're loud all the time and, you know, everything is high volume, you know. They don't know how to blend in with other people, you know. And I, and I, I think that's the thing that the, the choir, uh, that I got from, you know, singing with other people. Uh, Absolutely. You kind of want to blend in with everybody and, you know, um, it was it was it was just something that I always did, and when I got with the Isley Brothers, you know, you know, Ronald was already singing lead, so um, I didn't have to take on that duty for a while. But uh, <laughs> it was um, even even a lot of things that he sang, you know, I sang them first because I wrote the songs, right? You know, and he was just copying basically what I did. Or what, or what Ernie did when he wrote a song. Because, we, you know, back then we were like, you know, don't do anything. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't go off, off the script. <laughs> Sing the melody. You know, we were very uh, uh, strict about that. You know what I mean? Because the, song, the, the melodies were so, uh, they, they, had, they, they felt improvised. You know what I mean? If you heard, heard a melody, you would think, hey, well, you know, he's, He's really, you know, no, but that was the melody of the song. Right. Are we really sure with a love that lasted so, so long, still endure? That was, that was the melody. Yes. You, know, you didn't have to do anything, you know, you didn't have to do any improvising. And uh, I think a lot of people thought Ronald was improvising in a lot of songs. Wow. But he really wasn't. He was just singing the melody. Wow. You know? Wow, that's amazing. So did you even realize like, oh my gosh, I'm a boatload of, of, of talent. I'm creative, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm well trained, um, educated musically. I mean, did you feel like you were a threat or you was an addition to just grow it and make it what it is? Obviously you did not because look at all the awards. You have everything to prove it. I, I, uh, a threat. I mean, I didn't see myself as that. I, you know, um, I just saw myself as, uh, you know, who I was. I mean, I, I, I can, I can bring this to the table. You know what I mean? It's like I, I brought everything that I had to the table, and um, they knew my background, so they knew 
that hey, hey, he can do it. Let him do it, <laughs> you know, because I was I was I was there from beginning to end, from from the inception of the song to the mastering, all Absolutely. the way through. I mixed I mixed with the engineers. I was up at the at, at the board with the console, you know, mixing. You know, and back then mixing was a lot different. You know, a lot of it was manual. So you had to make your marks on the board, you know, make sure that, hey, you get this, you get these tracks, I'll take these set of tracks. You know, I was there doing all of that with the engineers, too. Absolutely. um, It was just, you know, it was, it was something I just loved to do. I love to make new music. That's my favorite part of the, uh, the recording business, the record business, is making a new song, creating a new song. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't think about things like that, you know, like, like what people would say about me or, you know, things. I I never thought about it that way. Right, right. Awesome, awesome. So, okay, so you have a phenomenal journey with the Isley Brothers and soon to be Isley Jasper Isley. You create uh, a new group, Isley at Jasper Isley. Tell us about that. Well, actually, you know, it wasn't really a new group. It was the... We did things the same way, recorded the same way we recorded when we were with the six, because the other three didn't, they weren't musicians, they didn't play instruments, <laughs> you see? So the music was put together by, you know, us, you know, and to, for, to a large degree, me, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So right. it, was, it was the same system, the same, we, we use the same uh, techniques. The uh, engineers are different. We used to different engineers, different studios sometimes. But the process was basically the same. And the only difference is we kept our vocals. You know, instead of Ronald singing something over again, <laughs> we just kept our vocals. And that's, that's basically how it went. It was, it was an easy transition. Right. You know. Wow. Amazing. So, um, Caravan of Love. Right. Yeah. I mean, we listened to it. We spoke about it. Um, who knew that that was going to be a hit banger? Tell us about that. Well, I knew before I started singing the lead part on it, when I heard the music coming back, because um, we finished the track first, the music track. And uh, I remember standing in the studio and I, I turned to Ernie. I said, Ernie, you know, that sounds like a soundtrack, you know, the music, you know. I said, this is, this is a special song here, you know? And um, when I started singing it, you know, sometimes you can sing a song and sometimes it's kind of difficult to, to get into. Caravan was very easy. And it almost sounded like I was listening to somebody else do, sing it while I was singing it. You know, it, it sounded like a song before I even mixed it, right. you know what I mean? And um, that's like I heard it on the radio somewhere, you know. And that's that's kind of how you can tell a song is going to be a hit. Is when it it makes you feel that way. Like I, I feel like I heard this song before. I feel like I should, you know. This has already been out. Absolutely. You know? And it had that feel to it. Uh, and the people at uh, Sony thought the same way. They they had like a, a listening uh, session. And all of it unanimously, Caravan of Love, Caravan of Love, you know. Right. Yes. And the music, and it has been sampled uh, so many different times and and featured in so many great productions. So I mean, did you even? Well, of course. I mean, that's what they felt. That's what you felt when you heard it. And um, basically, everything carried out the way it was supposed to. What you predicted. That's see. That's the thing that I think every songwriter kind of wants is to for the person who hears it to feel the same thing that they felt you know uh to to um to feel that same energy to feel that same those same feelings because people even tell me now they write comments about caravan of love and they said this song is it's like it should be out now (laughs) you know and um that's that's a huge compliment when when something can have that kind of life span to it a song you know um but i i knew it was special as soon as we recorded it absolutely it it is this is like by far my most 
favorite, uh, I guess, played song by by you, Isley, Jasper Isley. And I mean, I think that's gonna be the, the world language forever. So congratulations again uh, with your success. And now you are doing everything on a solo level. Yes, tell us about it. Yeah, yeah ever since, um, I think it was 87, summer of 87, and uh, I recorded the song Super Bad. That was my first single. And uh, it did really well. It, you know, it was like number three in Billboard, number one in R&R. &R. And um, it's up against some tough competition at the time, as I remember. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, that, that was one that um, when, I, when I turned the album in, when I delivered it to uh, Sony, um, I came up for a meeting one day and super bad was blasting on the on the floor where the a and r department was <laughs> and i was like hey what's going on here and then they called me in the room and they say hey man this is great this is something different you know and and that was good for me because that was my first you know solo album you know and um they really jumped on it you know and it, it did really well for me okay nice nice and and you have so many others time bomb amazing love invincible dance with you for the love of you where you remade that correct yes i and and i promise i mean how did you come up with the titles and what was your inspiration behind writing these phenomenal songs well, well generally um if it's a if it's a uh love song it's usually inspired by margie my wife right you know, <laughs> hey margie I could, I can think about her and, you know, come up with some pretty good lyrics, you know. Nice, nice. Uh, but, um, you know, there's some message songs in there, too. You know, and there's some also gospel songs which are inspired by God. Absolutely. You know? Thank you, Jesus. I've, I've, I've had, you know, numerous experiences with that, you know, inspiration and, and, and uh, God, you know, interceding sometimes and, and inspiring me. Um, I got some stories about that. It would take me a, a while to, to tell, them, <laughs> tell you all, but that's a big influence on how I, I think now and, you know, how, how you even write lyrics. Right, 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 I right. think the, every, all lyrics should be positive, you know, and, and something that's uplifting, some, something that someone can benefit from. Absolutely. You know, um, maybe in their relationship, you know, they can benefit from, you know, something that I, I put in there, you know. Right. Um, and and one of your songs is Thank You, Jesus. Uh, that's yeah. a great inspirational song and a very uplifting song and something that we actually just tie into in today's time because we sh all should be thankful. <laughs> that's true. And, you know, it, and that song is about, you know, before I knew about Christ the way I should have, he was watching over me. You know, I want to thank you, Jesus, for watching over me. Because there was a time, you know, when uh, I wasn't so knowledgeable about, you know, the scriptures and about what he had done and, and the whole thing. And so, but I knew, you know, when I came to, to realize uh, uh, the things that God does, I knew, I came to realize that he was actually watching over me. And that's, that's what inspired, inspired that song. Was, Absolutely. Uh, you know. It was kind of like a prayer almost. Wow, amazing. Testimonies, great testimony. And um, you have new music now, and I definitely wanted to um, at least listen to one of your new singles, um, We Are the People and Hey Love. Can you tell us about those songs and what was the inspiration behind that? And quickly tell us about the story of how you met Margie, your phenomenal wife. <laughs> oh, yeah, we were... Um uh, Frankie Crocker had um, uh, produced and you know emceed one of our shows at Madison Square, Madison Square Garden, and um, I came up uh, with with Kelly Isley to uh, meet with Frankie, and Margie was the music director at the time at WBLS in Manhattan, and um, we were in the meeting together, and Margie walks in, and. <laughs> I uh, politely excused myself from the meeting <laughs> and went out and talked to her. Right. And so that was the beginning of our uh, meeting each other. And 
um, it just kind of grew from there, you know. But we, you know, I was I was at a meeting, you know, and at, at WBLS. Right. right. But um, what was the rest of that question? I, uh, well, basically, uh, the inspiration behind the new songs that we're going to listen okay. to. And I just wanted everybody to know about how you met the beautiful Margie, the love mm -hmm. of your life, because I thought that was interesting. No yeah. meeting held you back when you saw her. <laughs> you no, know, I, I knew I had to leave right away. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, uh, yes. But so tell it, Go ahead. But yeah, about the songs. Um, hey, love is, you know, it kind of flip, I kind of flipped the thing. Uh, you know, usually uh, men are not vulnerable a lot of times. They don't tell their feelings, you know. But in Hey Love, that's what this guy is doing. He's pouring out his heart and he's asking, you know, do you feel the same way about me? You know, because he's crazy about this woman. And that's, that's the kind of uh, uh, lyrical uh, theme that I used. Uh, but musically, I wanted to go back, you know, and capture some of those um, those sounds, the synthesizers, you know, and the, the piano, uh, the harpsichord, all those things that I've used in the past to, to set the stage for the lyrics, you know. Yes. Now, and We Are The People is a different story. Okay. And we're listening to Hey Love Now. And it just still gives you that 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 feeling, that that loving feeling of what the Isley brothers and Isley Jasper Isley brought to us. Continue with you, Chris Jasper, and that's you know that's not by you know the fault. I mean, it's supposed to. That's who you are. Right, and like I said, a lot of that music, I I was playing all the music then, just like now. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why the music sounds so similar. Yes. <laughs> because the same guy is playing the music. So, um, yeah, I, I wanted to add all those those things that I had done before in these songs. Absolutely. Because that, that's my sound. That's my sound. That's, that's what I came up with. And the chords that I play are a little different, you know, than maybe some other uh, musicians play. That's part of the sound. Absolutely. I mean, I feel like... Um... Can I say that without Chris Jasper, we wouldn't have that sound. We wouldn't have that smoothness. We wouldn't have what, you know, we have come accustomed to. Can I say that? You can say that because, like I said, I intentionally uh, form chords in a different way. Because I, I, I grew up hearing Motown, right? And I could always tell a Motown song when it came on. I wouldn't necessarily know the artist because the artist didn't sing in the intro. Right? right, but I always do. Hey, that's a Motown song. As soon as it comes on, right? And I said, well, I'd like to create a sound that people recognize, you know, w w when when the music comes on, you know. And I started to form different chord structures, different voicings, you know. Um, I had a little classical, a little jazz, you know, and that created that sound. You know, you can hear it on every song, just about, especially the ballads. Absolutely. You know, you can, it, it has a consistent sound quality. Okay, so we're listening to We Are The People? Yeah. This is a, this is a message song, you know. It kind of speaks for itself. Okay. With God we stand from sea to sea You won't hear us on the radio or on TV we believe in love and family The rule of law and democracy We must see more Yes We are the nation Do you think the timing was right? Of course the timing was right to even write this Oh yeah, because um, it was inspired by the times, these times. People don't take the time to recognize how many things we have in common. This verse. We fought the war across the sea. We made the sacrifice to establish peace. We endured the struggles of 
of civil rights so that equality would define our lives. We follow people. Love it. I yeah, love it. People don't take the time to talk about those things. You know what I mean? That Absolutely. everybody, no matter what party you're from, no matter what race you are, right? This country, you know, went through these things. We all have these things in common, you know? And um, more should be talked about the things we have in common because that's what, that's what bounds, binds us together. And at the end, I'm saying, come together, you know? Yes, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Chris. I mean, we can go on and on, but, you know, we're going to definitely have our opportunity to just uh, talk and just learn so much more about you and your phenomenal work. And if there was ever a message that you wanted to leave to people that are needing to be inspired uh, as an artist, wanting to reach those higher heights and success, what would you leave with them? First of all, I would just say, be true to yourself. Understand who you are, what you want to accomplish. If you just want to make a bunch of money, you know, you can do that in a lot of different ways. But if it's only money, I don't think music is the thing for you. You have to love to do it. You have to learn so much about it to be really good at it. You know, you can, once in a while people can, you know, come up with a song or two, you know, come up with a hit or two and, you know, get lucky, you know, whatever. <laughs> but to be consistent, you know, you really have to love it. You really have to know something about it. So I would say learn as much as you can. Be exposed to as much as you can. And for crying out loud, please get good legal representation. <laughs> and take, Great and point. take their advice. Right. You know? Yes, yes. That is wonderful. Can you tell everybody how we can follow you on social media and how we could find your music? chrisjasper.com oh nice yep and it takes you to everything it takes you to the website it takes you to the where you can buy the music everything spotify and all the other things chrisjasper.com okay chris you got to promise me when you are coming to town that you will come right in the studio and we'll have a 101 absolutely and bring one of your awards so i can have one of them okay. Let me <laughs> donate one <laughs> all right all right Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. All right. Thank you, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Chris Jasper. Love you, Chris. All right now. Take care.